So in our previous lessons, we have looked at the idea of object-oriented programming and you learned how to define a class and we talked about some of the keywords and properties and things that go inside of those. So this lesson continues our discussion of object-oriented programming by introducing one of the primary ideas which is called inheritance. And so inheritance is a form of software reuse. And I know that we mentioned in the previous lesson when you learned about classes, why we make classes and how we can reuse those in our applications so that we don't have to continue to define the same classes over and over again. But inheritance really takes this to the next level. Inheritance allows us to form a new class, which is created by absorbing an existing class's members and enhancing them with new or modified capabilities. So we end up with new classes that allow us to get specific about the traits and properties that go inside of them. So what we get is some time savings, right? Inheritance lets us save time during app development by reusing proven and debugged high quality code, right? It's already been tried and tested. The bugs have already been worked out. You know it's solid. And we don't have to reinvent any wheels. So it also increases the likelihood that a system will be implemented effectively because someone has already taken the time to plan it all out, to think it out, and, and to make sure that it works. So there are two ideas that we have to dig into with inheritance. The first one is the idea of a base class. And so the base class is the existing class, right? You've already written it. Or when you're planning, you plan your base class to be the general class. Right? It contains all of the information that every object is going to need. And so the existing class from which a new class inherits is called a base class. And that new class that we're going to create is called a derived class. And so the derived class is the new class that inherits, right? We can think of this as a parent and child kind of relationship. Now in C Sharp, there's really no limit to the number of derived classes that you can have. So while we have to have a class at the top that's ultimately the base class, we can then create derived classes, which can then become base classes for future derived classes, right? There's really no limit to how deep this can go. And so while the base class is the more general of the two, the derived class is the specific. So it allows us to really dig into the problem and, and get into the details. And the reason for this is that when we're building software systems that contain significant amounts of code, they often deal with closely related kind of special cases. And so when we're solving problems as programmers and we're preoccupied with these special cases, then the details often obscure the bigger picture. With object-oriented programming, we can, when appropriate, focus on those commonalities among objects rather than the special cases. And so we can get into this idea of inheritance and the relationship that we're building with our objects for not only reuse, but to help make our lives a little easier when we're relating to these objects. So over the next couple of videos, we're going to learn how to write an object-oriented program using the ideas of inheritance.